let's talk a little bit about um, the show and this whole idea of mentoring and what, you know, I was interested in what you were saying before that um, you, because so, the show has you mentoring a team and Bobby Flay mentoring a team and Giada mentoring a team and how, you know, you have a very specific, you have a specific set of thoughts about mentoring, which would necessary, which would, you know, just when you put it into practice, it's going to make, create some tension in the show between how you do it and how they do it. Well, there's a big difference, that's for sure. You know, Bobby Flay's a leader. He's used to being a boss in a kitchen, so he's, he's training people. It's like a military kind of operation. Jada's just like a hug, you know, she's nurturing, she's the den mom, you know, everybody come here. And, and I'm the, I'm not either of those things. I, I keep looking at people and trying to, I'm, I'm like mining for something. I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to try to figure out, because here's the thing, people come to the competitions like this, and I still can't even believe I did this show, because I always said I wouldn't, but I got, I lured myself into it with this intellectual problem of, you know, how do you take people that have probably come to this and, and have gunked themselves, they're like wedding cakes with six miles of frosting, uh, because they've, they've put on all this assumption of what the job is, all this assumption of what is going to be demanded of them. I mean, who wants to be a star? Okay, that just scares you automatically. Um, and so you, you've got to get to them and, and say, okay, uh, first off, 90% of everything you're putting out in front of me is probably garbage and not you. Um, so, you know, the first thing I say, not a minor, but, but a surgeon, but instead of going after a tumor, you're going after that one little piece of truth and uniqueness that is workable. And you try to push everything else out of the way and say, see that? That's you. Um, now let's figure out how to make the rest of you like that. Right. It's almost like you're I was in the music business. You're like an A&R executive trying to figure out you know, it's like, okay, what is really special about yeah. this band or this singer-songwriter, and how do I, how do, what context do I put right. his work in? And it's got very little to do, this is the big shocker, it's got very little to do with food. Bobby Flay's uh, approach was, I'm going to find great cooks, and I can teach them to be TV people. And I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Because that's an awesome trick. I want to see that. And if you if you figure that out, open a camp, and I'll come. You know, and, and I'll take like the three week course in that. My thing was, look, number one, food is simply the the surfboard. It ain't the wave. You know, I mean, yes, it's it's important. But what I need above all is people that have Velcro. There's something sticky about them. There's something that makes you want to watch them, regardless of what they do. Everything else can be attached to that. Everything else can be hung on to that. But without something unique, without character, without story, without that je ne sais quoi of, gee, I'm just going to watch you because there's something interesting about you, you're doomed. You're doomed. So I was the exact opposite of, yeah. of Bobby in that. Um, and my thing was to pick people for a team that had something that I just couldn't put my finger on. It's like, I just enjoy watching you or I like the sound of your voice or there's something about you. I don't know what it is. We'll, hopefully we'll find it and, and exploit it, it. It's interesting. You were not looking for Minnie Altons. In fact, it was just the don't opposite. Don't want Minnie Altons. Don't want Minnie Altons. One's plenty? One's too much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like myself nearly enough to replicate me in, in something else. But I do think that that's, if, if someone has a really um, winning formula, I think that, uh, that in that case, you're looking for a protege. You're looking for someone to inject your DNA into uh, virally and, and turn, you know, another, you know, many, many me, as you say. I would rather find someone that's completely not that um, because I think that then I would have a fresh perspective on them. If, if you get down into that little wonderful nugget and you're basically looking in a mirror, then all you're going to do is bring you out in them, which is at best imitative. There's nothing unique about it. But now, more than ever, what we need is unique. Unique cells. What <coughs> specific characteristics did you find that you, that you could extract, that you could mine, you know, in the, in the people that you chose? Well, the horrible thing is that in some of them, you realize almost immediately that there isn't any. You thought there was, or you got stuck. You know, it's like when in divvying out the teams, you know, there were some of us that 
multiples of us that wanted one person. So we generally, you know, like I got three of my first picks and two people that I said okay. So it was to. a draft. <clears throat> Part of it was yes, it was a draft. It was basically a draft, and you realize very quickly that at least I did that with a couple of people you weren't going to be able to, you had a triage. It was like, I can't help you, you know, or I, I can, one, you know, it just happens. Right. Um, and then you've got to concentrate. The best thing to do, and it's, it's, it's really funny, one of my strategies was to lose people quickly so that I could get down to concentrating on the few that I really felt, felt something about. Um, and then what you find in, in them is, is you, you poke around for, interestingly enough, and I don't, I don't know why, I'm not really smart enough to get this, but the thing that is usually the most unique about a person in that situation is something that's being guarded by other people because what makes them special usually is very close to something painful or something that they're not sure of, something that makes them vulnerable, and so they're guard dogs. So when you get into their personality, start looking around, look for the big mean dog because it's usually right behind the dog is the thing you want because they're, they're all guarded. And something has put that dog there to, to, to protect this special thing. So, so you have to give the dog a treat, or you have to kill the dog, or you have to throw a bone and make the dog run over there. <laughs> you know, something to assuage Cerebus, you know, who's, who's there uh, guarding this thing. And then you can get down to business. Once the dog's out of the way, you can, you know, and once they trust you, which is what we're really talking about more than anything, that, that you're not trying to do them harm and you're not going to embarrass them. Because right. it is reality television and in the end, we really just want you to cry, okay? <laughs> Could you just cry now? Because it's like, you get it's it like out of the all way. these producers with these sharp sticks, like poke, poke, <laughs> cry, come on, you know. Um, but then if you can find whatever that little thing is, and it's completely unique to each person, then you can say, look, you've got this and nobody else has this. That makes it really interesting. What do you want to do with that? And was it a process so that, the, it, was it like a Cracker Jack box and that it was the surprise in the package that, that really catapulted them into, into some interesting place for you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not the, the thing about Cracker Jacks is of course you know there's a prize, and, but you don't know what the prize is. Well, in this situation, very often you stuck your hand in there and felt around. It's like, there is no prize. Uh, there's just not a freaking prize in this box. In which case, you just want to get your hand out of the box and you know, send it on its way. Um, but a lot of times, you, you'll have an idea of what is the prize. You just can't quite find exactly where it is because you'll see little bits of it. And then it's just getting it out and showing it to them to say, look what you've got. And then they get confidence because, oh, I've got something special. One last question about mentoring, and sure. that is, you have, well, we had an email exchange about mentoring, and I sent you things I wanted you to talk about. And mm -hmm. your response was, I don't know how to integrate these elements into um, a discussion about mentoring yeah. because mentoring to you starts, it's not about you, it's about the other person, and, and, and it is about this two-way thing, but it actually emanates from them. Yeah, that's the difference between mentoring and coaching or any other kind of personal leadership thing is that mentoring comes from them. It's, it's your consultant. If you're, you're, mentoring is consulting. You are, you are being brought on to look at what a person has and figure out how to do something with it. So it all comes from that individual person. You can't mentor in mass. You can't mentor by you know, category. It's, it's, it's an individual thing. And I think that it's, the, hard, the hardest part is listening and removing yourself from the equation because none of us really want to remove ourselves from the equations. That's not what human beings do. We put ourselves into the equation. Right. I mean, I could take a list of, of you know, five different functions, say in food, and, and you could say, well, how would you mentor these? And, the, the answer would be, I don't know, who's the person? Who's the target? <laughs> you know, who's the mark, so to speak? Because for every one of those people, you know, um, how am I going to mentor you to make better scrambled eggs or, or mentor him for, for better scrambled eggs? Who knows? Yeah. It's complete, a complete mystery until we get into who you are. And that's interesting because if you, if I, my guess is if I asked Flay that question, he would not, you know, he'd be like, okay, I've got to teach him how to make an omelet. <laughs> Keyword teach. Teach. You said teach. That's different from mentor. Mentoring does not necessarily involve teaching at all. People can teach themselves most things. Right. So the whole idea of 
those books, you know, I, I sent you, uh, I mentioned those books, Lessons to a Young Chef, mm -hmm. Lessons to a Young Musician, Lessons implies teaching. Right. But in the case of both of those books, it was actually something that people had written that they wished they could tell earlier versions of themselves. <laughs> you know, it's like stuff I wish I'd known <laughs> is basically That's what, what those are. And, and I think when real mentoring, you avoid that because your lessons aren't going to be their lessons. And you almost doom them. You know, if, if, if I'm mentoring or you're mentoring me in something and, and just start pummeling me with stories about how it was for you, then I start following your road, not mine, which all sounds very zen, which I guess maybe it is. But that's the, that's the big danger. So Bobby would get them their eggs. Everybody would make great eggs. And they would be good. They'd be darn good eggs. Um, through mentoring, though, I, you might find I don't like eggs. <laughs> or, um, I, you know what, I should poach and not do this. Or why am I doing that? Um, and I think that, that in the end, that's, you know, that's the power of mentoring, is that generally the person, if you do it right, the person comes out the other end not exactly, not on the same path they were on or seeing themselves in a different light, mm -hmm. which would be good. Yeah. Cool.